is there anything you uh, have opinions on Diddy? Have you had any experiences with Diddy? No, um, just I knew him for a long time. Got it. And with you, he was chill. He was good. He was an awesome guy. Yeah. Um, I knew him before he was um, Diddy. Do you know Sean Combs? Puff Daddy? Yeah. P. Diddy, whatever you call himself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, he's part of what's called the Boulet. The, the Boulet. Boulet. The Boulet is a branch of the Illuminati. You and your feelings about Daphne? Is she with d Or is it that you a little rod did? Okay, so the famous Mike Tyson has joined the Diddy conversation and his claims are making waves in the industry. Since Mike has known Diddy for a long time, and he has revealed the alleged names that were involved in the Diddy saga, and mind you, some of our favorites are on that list. These revelations have set the rumor into a wild frenzy. Let's jump right into this newest development in the Diddy case that has everybody on the edge. Just after Cassie presented her lawsuit against Diddy, Mike Tyson made an appearance on Valuetainment and spilled the beans on his relationship with Diddy that has escaped the public public's eyes for so long. Mike revealed that he had known Sean Combs long before he ever became Diddy. You might not believe it, but Mike revealed that Diddy used to help backstage when he first became the IT guy after becoming a first-time champion. Hey, I knew him for a long time. When I, when I first became champ, I knew him. I remember him. He used to have crates when he used to have my after parties and stuff. Also when they were throwing parties. Listen, before you go on about Mike being unrelated to Diddy's mess, remember that Mike was the first one to break the cycle of crime and poverty when he made it big in the wrestling world. So essentially, he knows more about backstreet guys like Diddy than us. With that aside, during his talk with Patrick Bet David, Mike revealed that even though he knew Diddy from the old days, he never wanted to get involved with him, allegedly due to his character issues. He claimed that he never expected Diddy to get as big as he did. Yeah, so people of his own generation didn't want him to be big. If you ask us, it tells us a lot about Diddy's personal life than we care to admit. Anyway, even before law enforcement raided his homes, the rapper, Sean Combs, faced a host of legal issues. Since November, he has faced five separate civil lawsuits accusing him of a range of S misconduct and other illegal activity. One of those cases has already been settled, but the others remain active. It all started when Cassandra Ventura, the R&B singer who previously dated Diddy, filed a federal lawsuit in the Southern District of New York in November last year against Diddy and the companies Bad Boy Records, Bad Boy Entertainment, Combs Enterprises, Epic Records, and Doe Corps. Ventura alleged that she was aid and subjected to years of mistreatment by Diddy. Following Cassie, more and more women came forward claiming similar allegations. But these lawsuits didn't do much to Diddy's reputation, and it wasn't until a male employee named Rodney Jones came forward with fully documented allegations that Diddy's fall actually began. The lawsuit reported that during the recording of the Love Album, Off the Grid, Jones alleged that he was a victim of mobbing by Diddy, suffered harassment, witnessed substance use, and had been a victim of S crimes. In addition to that, part of the legal documentation that was released online read, Mr. Combs informed Mr. Jones that he had intimate relations with the rapper, R&B singer, and Stevie J. Although the names of Meek Mill and Usher were not explicitly mentioned, mentioned, the attached footnotes suggest that it is them. As they are described with the words, he is a rapper from Philadelphia who dated Nicki Minaj, and he performed at the Super Bowl and had a very successful residency in Las Vegas. We all know that it was Meek Mill who used to date Nicki Minaj and had a pretty public breakup, and Usher recently had a successful Super Bowl performance that rained the headlines for a week straight. So the descriptions are pretty straightforward for the fans to guess. The word has it that Mike Tyson actually knew about Little Rod's allegations, which is why why he publicly refused to delve into his deep relationship with Diddy. To be honest, Meek Mill's ridiculous Twitter spree was more or less the admission of guilt for most fans. If Meek had released a sober statement, things would have been different, but it looked like Rod did hit a nerve with his allegations and Meek couldn't help but panic. Anyway, Usher took a slightly different approach as he claimed that he looked up to Diddy as his mentor as he learned valuable lessons from Diddy that he took into adulthood. Now you might be wondering, when did Usher live with Diddy? Well, when Usher was 14, he used to live with Diddy after he had just moved to LA to get a feel of the rapper's lifestyle. At the time, there were many rumors about Diddy taking advantage of Usher, and Rod's lawsuit just set it in stone. But word has it that Diddy paid Usher to clean his name a bit. So that's what Usher did when he made an appearance on The Masterclass. He said, I don't sleep to this day. 
I got it from him. I mean, this is a dude who just never slept. I mean, he's probably the first one to get up and the last one to go to sleep. And that commitment, I picked up. Not only that, Stevie J also decided to address the allegations claiming that they were untrue. However, when 50 Cent decided to tease Stevie J for having S relations with Diddy, he took it upon himself to confront 50, which to most people is just a knee-jerk reaction when someone calls them out on their lie. Curtis, what's good, man? You and your feelings about Daphne? Is she with him? Or is it that you little rod dick? The producer later joined TMZ for an interview, during which he referred to 50 as an Uncle Tom who wants to bring the black community down. He said, With guys like 50, Uncle Tom cats like that, you can't brush it under the rug. I don't see anybody reporting about what tatted up Holly said about him beating her up and his other baby mom saying he beat her up. I just look at it as he wants to bring the black community down worse than anybody else. How is that so? Not to mention, Diddy has always been rumored to have relations with people employed under him. Recently, Tanika Ray, a TV host and one-time backup singer for Sean Combs said she had a horrific experience with the rapper that caused her to avoid him. Ray wrote in a social media post that she knew to avoid him at all costs. I just knew to avoid him at all costs. Yes, I danced for him and kept my space. I interviewed him for his projects and kept my space. Nothing that is happening is surprising. Oh yeah, you know, we all have stories. Seriously, we all have stories. Mine is horrific and only five people know it and I probably will never tell it. But since then, I've been like, yep. Let's not forget the most well-documented account of Diddy acting inappropriately with anyone was when Diddy invited Justin Bieber, who was much younger at the time, to spend 48 hours with him at the mansion without any cameras. Although this might not have been amazing Major red flag at first. It is imperative to realize that Diddy claimed the legal guardianship of the young boy to do God knows what. At the time, Diddy believed that he was only making people jealous due to his closeness with the then rising star. But it turned out the fans were just creeped out. Another important aspect of that incident is that from the start of their conversation, Diddy vowed to give Justin a luxurious car. Diddy's proposition had people scratching their heads for a plausible answer to what Diddy was trying to keep under wraps by bribing the young Justin with his dream car. For the record, this is the clip captured on their unbalanced interaction. Turn 16. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna let you rock this every time. Right here? Yeah, like, yeah, this will be yours. So, oh, you tell me, okay. you know, like, it's a little dusty, but you know, I'm gonna put it in front shot it. Man. Let that out. Minute. Woo! Okay. Okay. All right, so, so I'm going to be driving this. And mind you, this car was going to become Justin's after he spent those 48 hours with Diddy. So many fans believe that the car and mansion might have been payment for what he had to go through in those 48 hours. Fans believe that all the rappers in the game are just in the closet, and that is because of the stigma of being gay. It's becoming very clear why all these rappers have made a living on violence, substances, and their constant degrading of women. Violence due to the jealousy amongst themselves, substances for the lack of self-respect, and last but not least, it was easy downing women, as they were all gay, and or diddling with Diddy and the rapper-loving kitties. It's sick. Shame on all those with blood on their hands. They knew firsthand, yet they did nothing but watch. That's all for today. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, and tune in to our next video with more news on your favorite celebrities.